I'm a game artist, like Emil said. I do research, I instruct at the HKU, <coughs> and I instruct Maya, 3D application. ZBrush is also a 3D application. It's more uh, like uh, digital sculpting. I also do um, level design uh, instruction. So I'm very broad in the sense that I'm a generalist or an all-rounder, as you can say. Uh, in my past experience, I've done a lot of work uh, in level design, game art, and various uh, parts of uh, game art like 2D, 3D, like texturing, modeling, etc., etc. And I do this at the game and interaction uh, school. Um, this is not my uh, full experience uh, in the work field, so let's get to the next slide for that. Um, what, I, what I'm going to do tonight is uh, in three parts, I'm going to explain stuff to you. Uh, so first, a little bit more about myself. I show some pictures of uh, portfolios. Um, then I'd like to uh, discuss with you uh, game art vision. Uh, I'll get back to, it, to that later for people who uh, are in the, uh, well, don't know what that is. Uh, and then it's demo time. So I'm going to uh, go into the software and show you some stuff. How I do things, how, I, how my workflow, my pipeline is uh, constructed. So, my past experience. Uh, I, when I started working in the game in, games industry, I started at uh, Lost Boys Games, uh, which became uh, Guerrilla Games at a later stage. And uh, after that, I worked at Coded Illusions. Uh, people will know that uh, Coded Illusions from Vertigo Games, because that's now their uh, name. And I've done a lot of things uh, within game art and a little bit of uh, level design, like I said. And so I'm going to show you some stuff. So I will skip through this a bit because the, uh, the, uh, the, f the uh, movies are very, very long. So let's skip a bit forward. Ah, it's you, Nick. Do you not think it'd be a good idea to get yourself out of this garden before you try anything else? Ah. So let's and talk a little bit about uh, this work. This was the first practice. entry in the games industry for me. I didn't have any education in games. Uh, I, was, uh, uh, I had a graduation in illustration. That's 2D. And it's completely different than uh, 3D or games at all. In my last year at uh, illustration uh, art school, I got in t contact with 3D applications. And I was completely blown, blown away by the possibilities of 3D. So that's how I slowly got into it, uh, game art. I just sent an email to uh, Lost Boys at the time, asking, hey, what are you doing? Uh, can I come by? I showed two pictures, and I had to get over there immediately. And before I got out of the door, I was, uh, well, I had a job. Very surprising. And again, I didn't know anything about 3D. Uh, I started modeling a bit. Uh, of course, I did 2D, so that was nice. But this was, was my education, the, my first project. Um, and then, yeah, of course, it was a paid uh, job. So you have to perform. Um, so anything the students at our uh, uh, Game Art uh, HQU uh, education is learning. I had to learn it uh, in my first project. And this is some work you see here, modeling, um, texturing, uh, also a bit of concepting for this game. So let's skip to the next one. This was the second game I worked on at uh, Lost Boys Games. It was slowly um, becoming uh, Guerrilla Games at the time. This is Shellshock, Shellshock Nam. 
76, I think. Um, it was a ship title. Uh, the previous was, wasn't. It was canned. And that is also something can happen. So be aware if you're going to work in the games industry. Uh, some projects you work on can be canned, uh, which means cancelled. Um, what's interesting about this project is that for us as a team, this was really uh, a good way to get our uh, workflow and pipeline in order. Because you have to realize that when you're making games, uh, you can have as much as talent uh, in your team, but if you, have, you don't have your uh, workflow or pipeline in order, everything collapses. And it wouldn't be the first uh, game company that uh, yeah, is cancelled out because of this. Um, next slide is, or the next movie is about Kills on Liberation. I will skip through it a bit. Let's see where it starts. Also again, um, did a lot of uh, work on this project. I was um, production uh, game director, which means I oversee all every, every assets that go into the game, 3D assets, and uh, make sure the quality is uh, good. Also did some uh, uh, lots of uh, modeling, like you see here. Levels, uh, objects, um, characters, some texturing. We had a, a specialist on the, the texture art, but we all, everybody in the team, we all kicked in, helped each other with uh, texturing and uh, UVing. Does any, anybody know what UVing is? Making a UV layout. Okay, that's not much. <laughs> Maybe I'll get into that later. So as you see, uh, also it was a ship title, like I said. Uh, did very well. Uh, and what's special about this project is that because of Shellshock, we had our workflow so good in order that that skills on liberation, we only had to tweak and refine our workflow, and we were uh, done with the title, or as we call it, alpha. When you go into alpha, uh, a game is almost shipping, uh, but it's uh, not entirely bug-free, but um, class A bugs are fixed. That means that the, the game doesn't break, and when that happens, then you're in the safe and we were uh, ready one week before the deadline. And that almost never happens. So that was a good, uh, yeah, uh, uh, a good sign to us as a team that we, we did our uh, job very well, especially on the pipeline and workflow uh, department. So let's get to the next one. So, does anybody know what polygons are? Uh, a little bit more, great. Well, here you can see the, the level we, uh, we saw in the movie. And now this is from the 3D application, what you see here. And you see all the detailing in terms of polygons. A polygon is one square in the screen, in the mesh. And this is how it, it builds up. Another example of a level mesh. This is without texturing. So this is purely the, uh, the mesh content. To give you a little bit of a, an idea of the, the scale of one level and where it, it cuts down or where you, where you like in, on the sides, you, you don't see anything anymore because that's out of the camera. So you only, you only construct uh, what you need. Another example. And maybe, I don't know if it's clearly uh, uh, viewable, but um, this mesh is very clean. And what I mean with clean is that it's uh, modeled down to the, to the bone. Uh, no mistakes. It's very clean in topology. 
Well, topology is how you distribute your uh, edge flow or your polygons. Uh, it's very efficient because it was produced for uh, the PSP, which means that it's uh, PlayStation one and a half. Uh, we always uh, said it's not PlayStation two, uh, but yeah, one and a half. So we have to be very efficient with our yeah, polygon flow, with uh, how much polygons we use, how much textures we use. So let's skip to the next one. This is a project I uh, worked on uh, at Coded Illusions, which is now Vertigo Games. Uh, it's an undisclosed undis project, so it's again canned. Um, you have to realize uh, on every project I worked on, we, uh, I've worked around about two and a half years or three years per pro project. So you can imagine the impact it has when a project is canceled. Uh, you invest so much energy, so much uh, effort in one project, and then something just is canned because of financial reasons or other reasons. Um, these screenshots uh, you see here is not my artwork, <laughs> because on this project I was a level designer. Um, to show you a little bit what level design or uh, in this case, for me, was. So what you see here is um, a switch between uh, in-game art and um, level design art. And as you can see, it's very rough, rough mesh. I will go into that later and then when I'm de demonstrating. Um, it's still very, um, well, not, uh, we, we call it a block out. So when you're doing level design and you're blocking it out in 3D, and then this is what you see or what you get. Uh, I've implemented, of course, uh, a little bit of light to get a, a sense of, of, of atmosphere in there. And this level design was very important to get the cameras right, to switch from one camera to another. And so it's really designing the camera and the, uh, the environments to match uh, yeah, the camera flow and the pacing. There's no gameplay in it, by the way, because this is just a, uh, an overview of uh, how the level looks and feels. So, and this is a picture from my current work. Um, I will ask you to remember this picture, take it a bit in, because there's something strange about this picture. Uh, well, not I say strange, but it isn't uh, what it's supposed to be. Uh, so think about that a bit. And here's another one from the same project. By the way, this is a uh, applied game project uh, for um, uh, psychiatric um, um, institution. Um, to it's it's kind of a a, a, bl a logger uh, or a um, it's not a blog, but uh, patients uh, who suffer from uh, depression uh, they can log into the a game, express their uh, emotions. And uh, yeah, and, the, and it gets all to the back end, uh, so that the, the people who treat the people um, can get a sense of what they're feeling, um, and apply uh, yeah the, the the treatment to that uh, order. And this uh, these pictures, maybe I go back one. is really about uh, getting a kind of an atmosphere. And I'm, uh, I don't want to spoil anything because I, I ask you to you know, look at it and, uh, and take it in a bit. Well, I'll just let, I'll just let it uh, go like this. It's also from the same project. Uh, Tim here in the front modeled this. So I also uh, do a lot of work with uh, interns at the HQU. 
to train them uh, to see uh, how they develop. Also from the same project, kind of a character. Another project, uh, won't talk about, talk about much about it, so it's very dark. And here are some uh, examples of, of characters and some other brain farts. This is in ZBrush, by the way. Uh, I do a lot of sketching in ZBrush. So uh, for me, it's just a, a digital yeah, kind of sketch tool, in a way. This is another project we do at the HQU. This is more for uh, burgemeesters, mayors. And you can see uh, I'm iterating it a bit. Another one uh, has a close relation to the previous one. Um, this is the app application for on the iPhone. <coughs> this is a personal project I'm uh, working on, uh, trying out some art style uh, examples. And I'm also doing a bit of technical art, which means I get into shaders, uh, see how I can construct uh, good shaders. So as you can see in the top corner on the, for you guys, it's on the, uh, on the right. You see the text, what appears uh, there. And I'm, what I'm doing in this example is that I blend the text from, uh, well, it's Hebrew language to English language. And this is an example how I do that into, in a node-based system. What's really nice about the uh, current te technology is that you can script or code in a node-based uh, manner uh, without having to deal with uh, a very technical artist or a coder. And what I also do is some game design. So, and this is a, let's see, yeah, this is a website, an online website. I don't share, by the way, but where I, put all my ideas and all my designs in uh, one document. And this one is also a uh, concept. I will get uh, back to the, this later because I'm going to use this one uh, in my working example. So and these are the, the software programs I use. Not everything, but this is uh, mainly the software I use uh, at this moment. So as you can see, 3D applications like Maya, ZBrush, Photoshop, of course, uh, Ndo, D2, Xnormal. Those are all texture being uh, uh, utilities. Um, maybe I'll get into that later for people who don't know what it is. And Unity 3D, so that's in a game engine. I also worked in um, Unreal, uh, the Killzone engine, of course. So, that concludes my first part of, the, uh, of my uh, presentation.